The creation of Frockley Coal Company started with a meeting in 1864. The discussion was a possibility of a joint venture. Attending that meeting that day, John Spencer, M. Spencer, T. Spencer, W. H. Stevenson, T. B. Simpson. The Spencers were the owners of Newburn Steelworks. The Stevensons owned existing Throckley collieries and formed the estate. T. B. Simpson was a minor engineer. Now, before we get the story, in 2024, what street do you live in? What area do you live in? There's a lot of streets named after these guys in the northeast. William Haswell Stevenson lived at Throckley House with his family. He held a lot of meetings at Throckley House, as known as Throckley Hall today. As Stevenson was looking out these windows, thinking about the good times, what he achieved in life, and maybe a bit of sad times as well. Now let's get back to the story when the world was black and white. Well, that's what I used to say when I was a kid. On the 24th of April of 1867, there was a big crowd that day. A lot of people turned out. A lot of folk were looking for work. You had to be seen. You had to be heard. You had to be shown willing. You had one goal in life, and that was to work. If you didn't work, you didn't eat. You had no choice about it. You had to get up, you had to get ready, and you had to get out. There was no letter off your ma them days. No standing in the corner, playing on your phone. You couldn't leave your work for the next person. You didn't sign on them days. You worked till you ached. Isabella Stevenson stood in front of the crowd, being brave, being tall, full of energy, she leaned over and cut the first sod of the site of the main shaft. The colliery was named in her honour, the Isabella. On the 1st of May of 1869, Mr Simpson, the mining engineer, he reported that the coal was 56 inches thick. In 1870, it was decided that the first mining would take place in the main shaft in the Brockwell. 1872, the fortnightly wage bill was £841. By 1896, only 24 years later, with a total of 783 employees at the main, with an output of at least 160,000 tonnes per year. Now water was always a problem at the Isabella. The mine was known as the wet pit. The water from the mine was carried away by the reef burn. This was dug out by William Brown at some point in 1740. Over the years, the waste blocked the reef burn with mine waste forming a small lake known locally as the Reef. At the site, the Isabella had two rows of terraced houses, pet cottages and office row. It was built on a slope above the pit. They even had allotments down there. 1914 come around. It was time to go to war. Some went, some stayed and some hid. There was a few hour lads that didn't come back and should always be remembered. 1926 come along, we had the strikes. But you cannot remember that. Before your time, eh? William Musgrove was the manager in 1932. As Hitler was coming to rising star, we were back in the trenches, fighting them Germans. As William Musgrove was resting at St Andrews up heading on the wall, Mr. J.T. Swanson was appointed manager in 1944. Joe Monaghan in 1950 became the manager of the Isabella. The last manager of 
of the Isabella was. Mr. J. Emerson. In the 1960s, the residents that still lived in the pit cottages walked up the footpath to Frockby, going up the wagon way to go about their business. Many of the Isabella buildings and pit cottages survived for a long time afterwards, after the mine closed. But it's all gone now. The cottages and all other structures were demolished. The weir stump level in all signs was removed. A small concrete pad marks the site of the Isabella shaft. Like every pit in the country, there was tragedy. A few died below the pit and above. And no doubt, somebody, somewhere, knew of somebody that worked down the Isabella. At the bottom of the picnic field, there's still some ruins in between the trees. If you look for them, you'll find them. In the heart of Throckley, where shadows play, beneath the earth where dark seams lay, stood the Isabella pit, proud and deep, a cradle of labour where secrets sleep. Men with their lanterns, wary yet bold, dug through the ages through stories untold. But within every heart, the pride carries on. For Frockley, dear miners, the legend is strong. <laughs>